All right, Charlie, welcome back to another episode of the Belly Up Podcast. Where are we at today? It's an honor to be here, Miles. We're over at Clementine's in Bayview, Wisconsin. Clementine's. It's a great little bar. Open at 6 a.m. every day of the entire year. That not they a, don't close. Not a day off. Not a day off. And uh, that you got to admire that. Yeah, they were saying on Thanksgiving they even are open. Have people over, a little turkey dinner. Yeah, they I got think a I gotta, pool table. I think I got to start convincing my family to just say, "Screw it, we're not doing our own turkey dinner. We're going to Clementine's. We're gonna have a turkey dinner there and have a good time at the bar." You're gonna convince your family to drive eight hours on Thanksgiving yeah. down to Milwaukee. Yep. God, you know, I don't think they're going to say yes. I don't Miles. think they're going to go for it, Charlie, but we're going to try. And then that's all. That's the best you can do, Miles. Yep, that's what that's what's all you can do. Yeah. So, Charlie, what's going on in your life? What what have you been up to? Well, my car got repoed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. True story. Charlie. Yeah. No. Yeah, I did. You yep. got. Your car got repoed. Repossessed. Now, I, I want to go out on a limb and yep. say you are too successful of a human being to be having your car repoed. That's what I thought, too, Miles. <laughs> what? That's what I thought, too. What happened? Well, I showed up into my driveway, and the car wasn't there. Are you sure it wasn't just stolen? Yeah. I called the police, and the police said, are you sure it wasn't repoed? And I said, yes, because I pay my bills. And then I thought about it for a brief second. I almost, you know how at the end of your life, you know, you, your life flashes before your eyes. All the 800 numbers flash before my eyes that I just ignored. And all those letters in the mail that I never, I mean, who opens mail these days? Not me. You know? Long story short, I, I thought go to it the was mailbox. I grab the mail out and then I walk into my house and I throw it in the garbage. Yeah, there's a longer story here. Like basically, it was, um, it was, uh, you know, I, I I was doing a a deal with the car situation, doing a like kind of a brand type deal, a brand deal, and we won't mention the brand um, because it's not their fault. It's really my fault at the end of the day. And there was this gap period between like one of, uh, I don't know what it was. It was a vehicle. We were changing vehicles and then some paperwork malfunction where I was supposed to on paper be covering it. And somebody did tell me that at one point And I said, ah, cool. So you got a new car and you just never made any payments on it. Well, technically I didn't have to. <laughs> It's kind of a weird thing. What happens, the, the lesson here, Miles, the lesson here for everybody is if you get a call often enough from like an 844 number or an 800 number, and you also get letters in the mail, you should at least either listen to the messages or open the letters. But I did make friends. This is just the most Charlie Barron's thing I've ever heard in my the, entire the, life. They, they, brought, they brought the car back because it was a mistake. My mistake, but they brought the car back and the repo guy um, was nice, dude. And he drops the car off and then he texts me right after. He goes, hey, are you the guy from TikTok? <laughs> and I says, yeah. And he says, sorry about the car, bro. And then he goes, uh, if you ever need a, uh, a tow truck for a video, let me know. Nice. Yeah, so I'm going to hit him up. I can't wait to see the uh, video on TikTok that's like, hey, we're going to repo Charlie Barron's car today. <laughs> and then it's him day in the life taking it, you bringing know, it back. It's super funny. When they repo your car, they put a number on it. They say number, and then uh, it's got like all these digits, and they write it in that. What are they? What's that stuff that they write on car like windows? Window chalk or window whatever. Window chalk. Yeah. And it's, I mean, you're a badass. You feel like you you just got out of prison, you know, yeah. riding down the highway with one of them. You feel like you're still in the orange jumpsuit. It's oh, like, what's up, Charlie? How old are you? Age is not. You know, people can get their car repoed at any age. I understand, miles. but you any age. You're just you're repos just do too, not discriminate. 
I think this is maybe a wake up car call, Charlie. It's time to start being more responsible. You know, Miles, I think that as well. Uh, really, it, it was. As soon as that happened, I said, you know what? If someone calls me five times now, I'm not just going to ignore it and like, go to voicemail and not listen to the voicemail and delete the voicemail because it's it clogs up my voicemail. Yeah, my voicemail is always full. Yeah. And that's, if it's a number, I don't know. because you're not paying your car bill. I didn't know I had to pay it. I mean, I technically knew, but uh, I don't care, dude. Uh, <laughs> I don't care. I fixed it. It was it was a me issue. What did your I'm dad taking responsibility. say about this? Oh, I didn't tell my dad. <laughs> he, he'd kick my ass. <laughs> he would kick my grown man ass. All right, Charlie. I want to hear your dad's speech to you if he does find out. When he does, you just talked about this on the internet now. What is the speech your dad's giving you? You did fucking what? <laughs> you know, that'd be the first thing. You know, is there a lot of, <sighs> you know, there's a lot of glasses, glasses on rubbing eyes. Yep. Under it, it the does, does this motion. He takes them off, cleans them a little bit and then puts them back on. But then he shoves them harder on his face and smudges them again. So he's got to take them off and clean them again. <laughs> and then you start talking and then he gets pissed and just whips them off. Really oh, fast. I've yeah. seen the whip. And then maybe he grabs them in his hand and he's got the one uh, ear piece sticking out and he's pointing it at you. And does he do that? The is that you know what I haven't seen that move since I was a kid. I was gonna say, well, this repo move on your end is gonna see that move. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't his car that got repoed. He might. It depends on his mood. He might either be like annoyed that this is happening, you know, that I haven't grown up, or he might think it's funny. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest, Charlie. The way you're talking about getting your car repoed, it kind of seems to me that this is not your first time. Hey, is that true? Well, I've been towed many a time. <laughs> repo, tow, same church, different pew. You know, it's all the same. I say this about the repo guys. They actually have, it's a very fascinating job. The fella I was talking to was doing repo during the day. And that is the harder gig. If you're doing repo, you want to be on the night shift because that's where the least amount of confrontation comes. And I also think, and you might want to uh, check this, fact check this, but I believe that if you are in an altercation with the repo person, they cannot legally uh, escalate sort of a, a confrontation. So basically, if you just drive that sucker off the truck, I don't think they can do anything legally. Yeah. I'm not recommending then you're that. you're a man on the run. I don't know if that's No, I don't either. think you're a man on the run. Well, the bank. But the bank ain't the law, baby. Yeah, that's true. You know, they're not the law. Well, in some senses, they are, Charlie. Nah. Screw the man, Miles. Yeah. That's what they say. You know what? That's why Charlie didn't pay his bill. He was really sticking it to the man. I just didn't listen to the voicemails, dude. Who's got time for that? You know? Well, I should have made time for it. As the and it was double time by having to figure out where your car was. <sighs> Is that why you've been Ubering everywhere? No, I, my, <laughs> that's hilarious. Actually, I'm just putting two and two together. <laughs> so this happened yesterday. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> no, uh, no. My car is over at um, my place and um, I just have been too lazy to go get it. Because I've been at my other place. Oh, he's got two places. You know. You got two places, but you can't pay your car bill. You know what? Hey, I put the money in real estate, not in uh, things with wheels that depreciate. Yeah. I think that's a smart financial situation. I think that's smarter. Nice yeah. job, Charlie. Thanks. High fives. Well, mm. should we take some callers Let's or do what? It. Let's do it. Hi, Courtney. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Where are you calling in from? Uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Oh, is anyone it? here from Sioux Falls? Yep. Oh, Miles is. Ma I got a stand up at uh, about Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Miles is making fun of me for it. If you so. wouldn't, if I was there last <laughs> night and he said, "Is anyone here from Sioux Falls?" and there was crickets in the room, but, uh, but so yeah, so here you are today, calling yeah. from Sioux Falls. So I guess they're yeah, it's populated yeah, yeah. by more than just crickets. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. 
<laughs> well, why don't you so, belly up to the bar with us? Tell us what's on your mind. So I bought my house about four years ago, and I live in a um, uh, elderly neighborhood. So I'm the youngest on my block, and I live next door to two older retired ladies, and they are obsessed with my lawn and my yard work. And if I don't get it done in a timely manner that they like, they just decide to do it themselves. <laughs> and I don't know if, it's, if they're doing it to be neighborly or if they're doing it to be passive aggressive. Well, here's my first question. Are they doing a good job? I mean, yeah, I'm not complaining about it, well, but was, yeah. I'm just kind of like, I don't know if it's at night and like, like if they're just trying to tell me something, I, I don't know what's up. <laughs> you know what, Courtney? Have you ever uh, asked them or had an interaction? Like after they do it, do you go over there and say, "Oh, thank you," or do you got do you just never talk to them about it? It's like a don't well, ask, cut grass kind of a deal. Well, that's the thing. So um, I'll see them outside. I won't go up to their door and thank you, but thank them. But I do have their phone number and I do text them thank you. But it's gotten a little like this last summer. It's gotten a little out of hand. Like they'll come over and do my yard work, and then they'll text me saying you're welcome for doing this, and I won't even be home to know that they did it. <laughs> oh wow, that's really pe- so. Okay, pull up your phone. Read off that text. Yeah, I'll find it. One second. All right. You know what this kind of sounds like to me? You ever play Monopoly, Charlie? Yeah. Um, it kind of sounds like, oh, there was a banking error. You get $200. And what do you do when you get a banking error? You don't question it because you're probably going to have to give the money back. I've so never gotten even- a banking error. <laughs> it's just like a, a met- it's like a metaphor, Charlie. Oh, I, I understand what you mean, Miles, but I have the text. It says, you're welcome for the work we did at your house today or didn't, didn't you notice? Oh, oh my god damn did they put a fire emoji next to that because they just burned your yeah, ass they are not being nice this wow is, they are not mowing your lawn because they're just had nothing to do and they thought they'd be nice they are doing this because they think that you aren't capable of keeping up to their standards is yeah what it, sounds like. it, it sounds like they're like and are they members of the hoa there is no hoa oh well forget it then well they are the hoa yeah you didn't know you had one but yeah, now you know pretty- Wait, it's, yeah. now, well, uh, well, how did you reply to that text? I, I was I was nice, and I said, honestly, I just got off work, and I haven't been able to look at it just yet. <laughs> Jeez but Louise. Thank you. Yeah. Um, have you talked to your other neighbors? Are they finding, like, are these ladies just mowing everyone's lawn, or is they just picking on you? No, they're just mowing my lawn. And, but they are kind, they, they're, are not afraid to give their opinion about something like we, like a month ago, we had some new people move in across the street and they went up to introduce themselves and said something along the lines of, Hey, we'd really appreciate it if you want to park your truck in front of our house. Oh, and you should probably also cut your weeds and your landscaping. Damn. So they're kind of always making comments. They're always kind of making comments about that stuff to other neighbors. Yeah, no, these these are these are very now they're very passive aggressive, I think. Uh, they've got a lot of time on their hands. Here's my question. Do they live in separate houses or do they live together? No, they live together. Are they a couple oh. or are they just old friends? I don't know if they are a couple. Um, they've lived together for about 30 years. Sounds like a and, couple. Yeah, I I think they're a couple, but I've been too afraid to ask because it's kind of like a don't ask, don't tell kind of thing. But I am um, good friends with the people who live across the street who have lived here for that long. And they said that there used to be a third lady who used to live there. But I don't know if she passed away or moved out. Well, so, she got sick of all their snarky think, comments and got out of there, I think, is what happened. That's this is. <laughs> This is uh this is really fun. I this this whole beef in your neighborhood. I think this is a lot of fun a- and um or just fascinating. I guess is is the the deal about it. That it, it, how often have they been cutting your uh, lawn and do they ever ask for money? They never ask for money, and it's probably 
about once a month um, if I don't get to it right away. All like, right. I'll, I'm not I'm not good about I, – I will admit I don't like yard work. I probably shouldn't have bought a house if I didn't like yard work. But and, but it does never get overgrown. Does that make sense? I'm right there with you. I, I cut my lawn only when I absolutely have to. Uh, I don't. Yeah. So here's what I would do if I was in your situation. And you know me, Charlie. What do I like to do? You like to cut grass. I like to stir the pot a little oh, bit. Oh, you're a pot yeah. stirrer. How would you stir this pot, Miles? So what I would start doing is I, when I do mow the lawn, I would purposely leave a few strips that I, air quotes, missed on their side of the property. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, you also could uh, just w- find a time right before they're going to mow their lawn and you just start mowing their lawn and do a bad job. That'll really get them fired up. What what if she does a really what if she does a really good job? And what if she yeah, okay. mirrors it? Yep. No, you, that would piss them off even more. What you need to do is, well, it depends on what kind of financial commitment you want here. You're going to hire uh, the best of the best in town, lawn mowers, okay. landscapers, and you're going to have them go to their house and do like the best job that you've ever seen done. Picking weeds, doing the flipping the uh, weed whacker over and doing the nice cut edging lines on the sidewalk and everything and then you can text them and okay. say uh you're welcome for doing a really really good job on your lawn um no need to thank me or pay me but uh i thought it looked, i thought it looked really good afterwards and also make sure when you hire this lawn service company make sure they start at 6 a.m yeah perfect <laughs> So that's one. Perfect. I'll get right on that. (laughs) Now that's one route. The other route is just stop mowing your lawn altogether and just see what their limit is. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like they may. Yeah, that's true too. They may just mow your lawn once a week, (laughs) and you you can just if you can if you're comfortable taking those those passive aggressive text messages off the chin, but you're getting your lawn mowed every week. I think that that might be worth it. I was going to say you could even piss them off more and get one of those signs that says this is a natural lawn or whatever. You know, one, basically people who have overgrown lawns, they stick that sign in the front yard and uh, they say, uh, like, um, go slow, bees at play or something like that. You know, like make it a real <laughs> that would probably piss them off pretty good. Do yeah, they- yeah. And I. Yeah, go ahead. Do they have a like pristine lawn or do they have like a gardening lawn? No, they they have a, they take very good care of their lawn. Yeah, like that, that'll that'll piss them off. Daily. But make a hippie oh, lawn. I got another one. What is it? <laughs> you're going to get a yard sign that um and you're going to make a fake business and you're going to name it something like two cranky old women lawn services. <laughs> And you're gonna stick it in their front yard and put their phone number on there. Ooh. And that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, she yeah. likes that one. Dude. She kind of likes the diabolical one. I though. know. I think you can be a little bit more. I do. I like the diabolical one. So what? What are you? What are you gonna do? What pathway are you gonna take after we've given you a few suggestions here? You know, I, as much as I like the diabolical ones, I kind of like to not the pot as much as I can so I think I might just let it go for as long as I can to see how much they can take yeah just stop mowing your lawn they'll do it for you I I think that's the route I gotta take and I've talked to some friends about it and they're and they've been on the fence they're like well they're just being nice I'm like no they're being passive aggressive I just know it because I'll just it's just it's the text messages that really get to me <laughs> you can feel it you can feel it when they're being passive aggressive have you ever take taken them over a casserole to thank them for uh cutting your lawn yeah um i brought them over cookies one time i brought them over a case of beer like yeah. this has been going on for probably the last three years yeah they've been cutting your lawn for three years yeah, I think you even got to take this a step further and just put your lawnmower on the curb with a sign that says free. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and then that'll really piss them off. You're like, I don't even need yes, this anymore. <laughs> right, right. 
right. You're doing this for me. Why do I need this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the move right there. So I think you got a plan. Just stop mowing, get rid of that lawnmower. And uh, I mean, you're living the dream. You got free lawn care. Yeah. It's like you live. I know. In a, it's really, like you live really in a retired community. You got free lawn service. I I pretty much do live in a retired community. <laughs> <laughs> what do you What do you think, though, if those gals uh, called up this show, what do you think they would say? Uh, they would say that they were being nice and they were being helpful. Yeah, they but would, they would fold. I mean, they if, would. They like if they were calling in, not knowing you called in, they were calling in to talk about their neighbor how they um, mow the lawn. Would they say? But it's getting oh, a little would, out of hand. I don't know what they would say exactly. They'd probably complain about me, like I'm complaining about them. But you know, I I don't know. But they'd say that they were still being nice and they were just being neighborly. Yeah, yeah. Do they uh, shovel your walk? Is this a, does this yeah, extend this to the is, winter? Yeah. <laughs> no. So they so sometimes they they will help me, but very rarely in the winter. Um, I li- I have a very steep driveway, so snow blowing is not fun. And our driveways are so close together. Last winter, we had a really bad snow, and I was outside snow blowing, and a gust of wind came up and blew the snow that was blowing out, like <laughs> was blowing out of the auger or whatever. Onto and theirs. it blew the snow on onto their driveway, and they were outside, and they were yelling at me to turn the to turn the thing and i'm like i can't control the wind <laughs> it was cra- it was nuts so did you then go blow their uh their driveway after that or did you just stop no i just i just i just stopped yeah god that's actually great <laughs> it's or yeah just keep oh. doing stuff like that just little subtle jabs yeah yeah well Definitely. i all right. Well, I think uh, we gave you some options, and uh, I'm excited for you to maybe uh, irritate them a little bit more. This sounds like they got. Yeah, it I'm coming. looking forward to it. They, I think so. Thank you for a little advice. <laughs> What's very funny is when she called, you could tell she was a little bit like frustrated, and now she's so happy that she has a plan to piss these people <laughs> off. <laughs> I, she's, she's like, I'm gonna yeah, have a great yeah, weekend. It was, <laughs> it was a whole bunch of things. I was nervous to talk to you guys, and then now I'm just happy, and I got all these plans, and so we're all good. Well, no, you don't have plans now. You don't got to mow your lawn. Yeah. You're just gonna be chilling on the porch. You well, know? she's got to get for a sale it, sign. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Well, congratulations awesome. on the rest of your life. <laughs> thanks. thanks. Yeah. Thanks have for calling. Life. Yeah. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, bye bye. Miles. Hmm. Got to hand it to you. You have some good ideas in there. Yeah. Uh, I'm all talk, though. I could never do that on my what, own lawn. What, I would never. <laughs> what would you honestly do in that situation? Um, I don't. I just would take the licks, I think. Yeah. I think you just got to take the passive aggressive comments. I may, if I catch them mowing my lawn, I may go out there. Like if I'm coming home and they're mowing it, I like, got it. Like, what if I was coming home to mow the lawn? You know? Yeah, it's um, tough. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't have neighbors like that. I feel good about it. Mm-hmm. Great that, gal, though. Great gal. It kind of, yeah. It kind of, it kind of makes you feel like a piece of shit, though. You know, someone else mowing your lawn to a degree. Well, that's what's like kind of the offensive part of it, you know? Yeah. It's like I was. It's like trying to. It's like it's kind of like trying to tell other parents how they should be parenting their kid. You just just don't do that. You know? So. All right. Should we take another one? Let's do it. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. And I I just heard a door open. So were you just trying to wait to get away from the uh, house to make this call? What's going on? Ain't going to lie to you, fellas. I'm sitting here at work. All right. That's that's as far as they know, I'm running out and doing an estimate. (laughs) That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Nice. Well, uh, belly on up to the bar with us instead. Tell us uh, your name and what's on your mind. Yeah, fellas. My name's Tyson. And I just had a quick question on how I can get out of going to Disneyland with the in-laws there. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, wow. You are in a predicament. I um well, let's get some backstory here, Tyson. Are any of your in-laws Disney adults? Are any of my in-laws busy adults? Yeah, and you know what I'm talking about. They're always wearing the Mickey Mouse ears. They, they never shut up about Disney and how awesome yeah, it is. They rewatch oh, Mulan yeah. over and over again. Let's just say they got themselves Disney Web 2023 uh, t-shirts that they can all wear as a family out there. Oh my god! <laughs> I would oh, rather man. snort glass. Yeah. Than do oh that. my god! I yep. always. Okay. Well, well they're going at near the end of October there, and I'm a big ice fisherman. So and we usually get ice down here in Utah around end of October. So that's kind of my really? go-to How? right there. What the are you, hell? Are you, oh, yeah. up, are you way up uh, in the we, mountains or what? <laughs> It's about two and a half hour drive up to the UN is there and probably looking at two to three inches of ice when going out there, but <laughs> I like okay. So, nice you, <laughs> you would rather two to three inches of ice, that's not like a ton of ice. You know, he'd rather go risk his life on some mountain ice than <laughs> he, go to Disney. He with has his to family. walk with his legs spread way apart so he can do better <laughs> weight distribution so he doesn't fall through the ice instead of going to Disneyland. <laughs> two to three inches of ice. Yes, dude. <laughs> He puts his That's pole in the water. That's more than I'd get in any ride. I, I mean, that is, yeah, that's, <laughs> the, I mean, I've fished on two or three inches of ice before, but I'm not far from shore. I, I don't even know if I have fished on two or three inches. No, I don't advise it. That, I don't that's, advise that, that no. <laughs> would rather not. That's extreme <laughs> ice fishing right there, dude. Um. Okay. Well, we don't want to be held liable for you fishing on two inches of ice, so we're going to pretend like you didn't tell us that. Yeah, Charlie. we'll pretend it's a full five. Yeah. Um, okay. So how many people That's are going to... Too. How many? <laughs> how many people are going to Disneyland or Disney World, and uh, what is it going to be like? What, like, what are you walking into if you do go? So we got probably 12 people going we got my girl her family which is about six others and then they got grandpa grandma and uncle going out there and all that stuff yeah. um kind of a side bit on that it was a christmas present for the girl and they said well you can we'd really like you to go and it's been a big fight and everything like that and wanting me to go and then so they want me to pay for the disney ticket and then my girlfriend just got a um Venmo request from her mom for 400 bucks for the Airbnb. So she's paying 400 bucks for her Christmas. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. Wait, 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 wait. So this is, uh, explain the relationship again. I forgot. Wife, girlfriend? Fiance. Yep. Fiance. Okay. We've been dating about three years now, so they're like in-laws. Wow. Okay. Three years you've been, you, dude, you're signing up for a <laughs> lifetime of this crap. <laughs> Are you ready for I, that? Oh, I know. <laughs> now, here's the thing, though. Um, you do kind of got to set. Sacrifice, you do she's have to, worth it. I like you that. You do have to set the tone early, though. So this this trip here is important. But it sounds like you've already been putting up a stink and there's been arguments. Is that what you said? Oh, yeah. Yep. There have definitely been arguments with the girl and the girl's family. She really wants me to go. They don't but want you I to have go. Zero desire. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, they, they would. They would. Yeah. So you're talking. You told Maybe me. they don't. So she acts like she does. So <laughs> Peepa and Mima are also going to this. I mean, I can't imagine that Grandpa is that jack to go to Disneyland, or is he just happy to be out of the nursing home to do something, or what's going on there? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I'm, you know, he's definitely. I mean, be, being at that age, I would want to be staying home in a quiet place i'm already like that at 27 so i'm going to a crowd of people i'm not sure what he's thinking he's been bribed or something yeah maybe he wants to just see a whole new world <laughs> a whole fantastic point of view <laughs> although charlie well it i is would that say that Utah it is a family. small world after all it is a small world after all but you don't know that until you take a magic <laughs> carpet ride mm-hmm um, That's if you about had how far my Disneyland Tyson, Mountain, right? Tyson, let me ask you this. If you had three wishes we could grant you right now revolving around this Disney trip, what would they be? Five inches of ice. Yep. Um, 
Let's see here. Three wishes. Ooh, I, I didn't even have to rub the lamp or anything. No, no, we're, we're rubbing the lamp for you right now. <laughs> Miles. Yeah, we'd probably ask for five inches of ice. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, well, that, you, you already messed but, up the wishes question because yeah. everyone knows with the war, first wish, you always ask for more wishes. That's rule number one. You can't do it. Haven't you seen Aladdin? No. Come on. Um, all right, Tyson. I, I, Here, I, here's. Yeah. Let's get down to business on this. Let's be real on this. Um, do, you have made known your lack of Disney love to your fiance, and she has said, essentially, suck it up. You're going. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Yep. Then it, you and then got. They wanting me to pay for the tickets and the Airbnb, whereas it was a Christmas present for everybody else. Okay. You got two pathways here, Tyson. You can either. <laughs> you can either push against this and make a stand and say no, or you put this in your bank, you put this in your leverage account, and then you get a a free weekend to do whatever the hell you want. That could be with your fiance. That could be just a weekend ice fishing to get away. I would start building the account with this as you guys go into marriage. You know, Uh, this is exactly what every marriage therapist will tell you not to do. But start taking score right yep. now. Got it. There's everyone knows that marriage is about keeping score and having leverage over the other person. And, and this is starts right now. A lot of leverage. So you keep maintaining your distaste for Disney, and then you going will just add more to your account. There. And the thing is, is if you can actually have because I'm be honest, when you're going to go on this trip, Charlie, yeah, he's going to. It you sounds have to go. like. You're going, especially if you'd like to marry this gal, you have to go on the trip. But if you can get in the right mentality here, Tyson, and know that once because this ain't going to be their first trip that they're going to lug you along on. I yeah, can tell you that no, this might no. be an annual. That's where thing. I'm at. Well, fellas. you so you got to get it might hey, be a long term hey, commitment. Hey, well, Tyson, went, Tyson, went. you got to get in the right mentality. You have to go into every single year knowing that you're going to have one trip a year that absolutely buys you leverage for the rest of the year. It is um, your penance. It is your uh, one weekend that you're going to have to suffer through just so that you can go ice fishing whenever the hell you want. And you're going to live this until the day that you die. You just view it as you got to work an extra weekend. It's basically you know? it. You're working that weekend. You it's got a business scheduled trip. on a weekend. You didn't want to work, but you kind of have to because the boss said so. Yeah. Yeah. That's always a good go to right there. Perfect. Now, well, here's what I like about your your fiance and your marriage. Oh, you said that she is worth it. And as horrific as Disney World or land is. And I've been there. It, it first of all, that place has mice. Second of all, the drinks insanely really? expensive. Really, <laughs> what it does? The Mickey Mouse joke. Yeah, yeah. I dropped it in there. <laughs> I, I thought it was well placed. <laughs> um, parking is insane. It's nuts. It's not the happiest place on earth. I'm gonna say that right now. But anyways, no. I like that you like your fiance more than you hate Disney because uh, you love your fiance more than you hate Disney. Because if that equalizes, my God, that marriage is gonna work. It's one weekend a year, definitely. No, and I. It just sounds like a nightmare for a week. Can we all agree on that? Yeah, but like a couple of days at Disney is okay, but what what do you do for a week? Oh, at Disney? God. That's not a weekend, dude. That's a full week. Time out. You're going to spend dude, six <laughs> a week at Disney? That's yeah. a dude, that's um that's like a a, a prison sentence. And and you got to pay for that? That's what I'm saying. It's, you got oh, you got to pay to go to prison. I got every day in that uh, that 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 prison, you're going to be paying for like food. Overpriced food, over, Those. and you're gonna be drinking a lot on this just to be able to stay. Whew. All right. Well, you know what? It's hey, I, did, so I got a little legal. Hey. Oh, it's California. You got edibles. You can yeah. take. I don't. I didn't know it was yes, a sir. week. <laughs> I didn't know it was a week. Legal. So I'm gonna backtrack on everything I said. I think you got to start Thank looking. You. I think you got to start <laughs> looking for maybe a new mate. <laughs> 
I think so that you know. You just help me because my girlfriend watches this show with me. So with, when you guys were telling me all this, I'm like, we can't watch this episode together. We can't. No, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So I appreciate the backtrack on there. Seven. <laughs> yeah, he's like, guys, I called in to help my argument here, <laughs> and then you sided with her. What the hell? Yeah, week. No, I'm on your side. Weeks too long. You got to find a way. Maybe show up. You know, four days into it, and then you only got a couple. I don't know. You got. I mean, this cannot be an annual trip. You got to lay that groundwork now. I mean, that that's too much for any person to handle. If this is a one time deal, you suck it up, you put it in the bank account, you get you get to do a trip that that you want to do and she's got to come. Yeah. No, what you got to do cuz he's probably going to end up going on this trip. Yeah. What you got to do is while you guys are there, you're like <laughs> This is a fun once every couple decades trip. I'm glad we're doing it now. Fun once in a lifetime yeah, once experience. In a, this is a once in a <laughs> lifetime experience. I'm soaking it in now because I'll never come back here because it's a once in a lifetime experience. Right, guys? <laughs> That's well, good, I do yeah. have kind of a, you guys tell me what this idea would be. So. I'm in, U- I'm in Utah here, so you guys know those Utah families. I'm the oldest of 10. So part of me is thinking, well, maybe I should see if we can go on a family vacation with the 10 of my siblings and family, take her out before Disneyland. And then at that point, she's like, that was hell. You don't have to come suffer with my family. Oh, well, <laughs> if, she's, dude, if she It'll suffers, revenge, yeah. yeah, if she suffers with your family, you're definitely, you It'll got 10, worse. you're one of 10. <laughs> I'm one of 12. Oh, you guys yes, are both mass same. produced. Yeah. Thanks, Miles. Miles, you just stole my <laughs> joke. Um, Miles is mad because I made that Disney joke about the mice. No, that was a great joke. Oh, did you like I, it? I missed it right away, to be honest. Oh, with you. nice. Um, I think if you go on a family vacation, are you, do you, does your family do family vacations? Uh, family vacations for us as a kid was us going down to grandpas and grandmas and then we got to spend a week on the farm yeah the older i've gotten it's us helping grandpa and grandma on the farm yeah <laughs> no I, I, don't don't uh There's not a lot of vacations yeah no that's good that's good uh because then you don't have to pay for it uh but you're already really paying for it oh yeah yeah you're in trouble man uh what's is your uh wife a, a disney adult uh or your fiance a disney adult is she like hardcore like that uh not necessarily she's mainly going because her mom is the type that if you don't go do something with the family it becomes a big ordeal oh boy so it's easier for her to go spend a week in disneyland and pay the money for the airbnb than it is to deal with her mom wow sounds like a codependent relationship actually right there i do not envy your position <laughs> yeah this is maybe you go on the <laughs> disney trip but she goes to an al-anon meeting would we'll just say you couldn't get off of work and you, you, instead of coming on Monday, you come on like Thursday or Friday and still go so that you kind of scratch that itch. Yeah, but then you don't have to be there the whole time. Maybe okay. maybe commit to just less days. Right? Do you that have might a, be a good compromise. I think so. Do you have a demanding job, Tyson? Uh, n- not necessarily. I'm a sign sales guy, so I sell signs to people. I love how I asked if he had pretty flexible with all that. I like how I asked if he had a demanding job. And as we started the call, he was walking out to take this call. So yeah, Um, Yeah, he's at work and he's talking to us. Yeah. So So clearly not not that demanding. You're a sign sales guy. (laughs) Sign sales guy. Yeah. Can you make us a bellied up beer sign? You know, I would love to make you guys a belly up beer sign. That'd be awesome. Now, here's the question. Are we going to have Bush on there or are we going to have your lineys on there? Well, we're going to do as ma- we're going to order multiple signs. We're going to do as many as it takes to get you busy enough to where you don't have to go to Disneyland because you are working on our side. That's signs. true. There we go. Charlie. Yeah, we found we it. We got it. Oh, awesome you got to work. So and- we- and we'll take the money you saved on that Airbnb and we'll put it toward the sign fund. Yeah, so they'll be free. <laughs> It'll be free for us. Get you off the hook. This is a win-win, Tyson. Yep. Yep. All right. We're going to order up some Dude, signs. I agree. And then you just got to work, dude. There's, you got to bring home the bacon. Yeah, this is a custom 
deal. We're going to shout out you and your business. I mean, this is good financial uh, situation for your family. You just can't make it to Disney the full week. And I'm, and you said it's the end of October or beginning of October? End of October. I was really hoping it was the beginning because then I could use the excuse of Charlie's show out there in Vegas. Yeah. Are you coming to my show in Vegas? I am indeed. That's awesome, man. Hell yeah. All right. Well, here's the deal. We're going to place our order the third week of October and we expect it before November 1st. So uh, you don't have much time to work with. And if you got to work overtime and maybe skip a trip, that's just what you're going to have to do. That's just what, you know, you're doing it for the betterment of your future family. You know, and that's that's true. I got to make sure that your podcast has suitable signage there. And if I let you guys down, I won't be allowed to listen anymore. So, yeah, I think that's a great plan there, fellas. All right. So, well, Tyson, thanks for calling in. Um, and thanks to your fiance for listening to this. And if she's really upset with us, have her call and, uh, we'll chit chat with her too. <laughs> awesome. Well, I may be calling in a couple more weeks to give you all an update on me going on that Disney trip. Cause like you spell said before, we all know I'm going to end up going. <laughs> <laughs> well, have fun, <laughs> have fun out there. I'm sure you'll find something. I uh, did. Do, do they? Um, you too, fellas. All right. Well, real good. We'll see ya. Uh, I, I, it's I just a. It's it just. No, this is to lose lose. It is. I hate Disneyland. <laughs> I do. The last time I was there, it was like my sixth birthday. Was it? Oh, yeah. you went for your birthday? Yeah, I got a sticker. Damn. That said it was my birthday. Really? Yeah. Were you excited? Did you have fun? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Six. It's like anything makes a six year old happy, you know? That's really cool. Were you guys down there for vacation? Just happened to be around your birthday or did, Yeah. Yeah. Yep. In Florida. No, the Disneyland's in California. Oh, okay. Cool. Disney World's in Florida. Got it. I always mix them up. Yeah. You Same know. church, different pew. Same church, different pew. Well, should we take another one? Yeah. Well, Charlie. Hi, Miles. This Sunday, you got to tip back two things. What's you want to know what? Your clocks and a glass of tippy cow. Wait, are we still doing the daylight savings type thing? Oh, yeah. No, that's I, this Sunday. I think they stopped doing that, dude. No, I think it's going to happen. No, they they don't do it anymore. They passed the law. I know, but I don't think that the I don't think it's real. Well, either way, we're going to be drinking some tippy cow. Yeah, what do you I think? Mean, huh? What? Yeah, regardless. We're going to tip back some cow and tip back our clocks. If you guys are wondering how Charlie gets himself in all the mishaps, it's because he just thinks that they're not doing it anymore. And so he's just going <laughs> to be an hour late to something. Hey, I w- by the way, dude, I was here early today. Actually, were, I was here five minutes late and you were here 25 minutes late. Well, so. I had to. Anyways, guys, tip it on back. Tip your t- clocks back. If you tip it back. You at least won't. No, you'll be late. You might. Yeah. Don't do it to a grandfather clock. If you tip that back there top heavy, yeah. it might fall. No, do it to your analog. Turn, yeah. turn back time. If I could turn back time. If I could find a way. And I will raise you up on Tippy Oh, Guys, drink Tippy Cow. Yeah, Turn you your clocks tippy back. Tip it on back with Tippy Cow. Uh, this is Jackson. Hey, Jackson. Where are you calling in from? I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, Kansas City. Is your brother Patrick Mahomes? Oh, I wish. Just had to get that out of the way. Okay. Didn't know. Didn't know for <laughs> sure. All right, well, Jackson, what's on your mind? Well, uh, I'm calling in today. Uh, Back a few months ago, I was uh, at a friend's house, and they live on some acreage, so we do uh, big bonfire parties and just hang out. And, well, uh, you know, I've been drinking, and uh, I got stuck on the couch while everybody else was in the bedrooms in the the camper they have outside. And uh, 3 or 4 in the morning, I... uh, you know, go to take my, my nightly fee, and I uh, hear some uh, loud music coming from uh, my friend's parents' room. And I was like, huh, that's pretty weird. And then uh, I started to hear some other noises. And uh, the state I was in, I was like, what is that? And then it clicked, and I was like, oh. I was like, uh, they're doing the dirty. 
with everybody here. And uh, so now every time I see him, that's all I, uh, that's all I, well, I just hear it every time I see him. And I go over there quite a bit. And so I'm wondering, uh, how do I uh, get that? Like every time I see them, uh, how do I uh, prevent from hearing and hearing that? So you heard your right. friend's yeah. parents. Yeah. Charlie, uh, let's ask him what it sounded like. Can you do a reenactment for us? Yeah. What did it sound like? Uh, you know, I don't think I, uh, I want to do that. It's just going to like reopen that scar. That's no, what we like, have uh, to do. This is it's part of your part therapy. Of the therapy. It's exposure therapy. Once you get it out there, <laughs> you cannot live with these sounds in your head alone. We must all hear them. So what, what did it sound like? What did it sound like? Uh, <laughs> it was, it was pretty vocal. It was a lot of, uh, I heard a lot of, Oh shit. Oh shit! And uh, so, I think yeah, was, I heard a lot of that. And I, I think it was more of a oh shit. Words. Who was saying oh shit? Yeah, M- Mr. or Mrs. It was her. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be kind of weird if he was yeah. saying. I that didn't. Uh, yeah, I, went, I went back to the couch that night, and I just laid there like a mummy, arms crossed, just eyes wide open, just staring at the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> he. he he went back, laid down, eyes wide open, stared at the ceiling, and just thought, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> what song were they, uh, were they doing it to? You know, I really don't remember. Was it a modern song? Really loud, I feel like, like making love. Oh, shit. Like, uh, Sorry, I cut you off. And then I told my friend that like a few days later. He goes, oh, yeah, they do it all the time. I was like, you listen to that all the time? I was like, what in the world? Okay. That, so you know, move out. Good for them, honestly. How old are they? Uh, I'd say upper 40s. Upper f- I don't really ask for their age, but uh, yeah, I'd say late 40s. Good for them, man. You know, they, they're they still, uh, they're hey, married. I'm, they're I'm keeping the flame the alive. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you like, yeah. it's not like you went to the kitchen for a glass of water and they were, she, he, he was mounting her on the counter or anything. You just heard some noises. Yeah. You know, I, I think what could yeah. be important is to remember that we're just animals, you know, we are. And that is a very natural thing to do. We had another caller uh, call in that I believe saw her folks uh, doing it, it on on the porch. On the so, porch. You know what? Maybe it's good to get over oh, the yeah, trauma. I that one. Yeah, yeah, maybe realizing that your situation ain't so bad. Yeah. I mean, and you were a True. guest in, in their home, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, that brings up another point. I know... Uh, where do you guys stand on the idea of fornication while you have guests in the house? Because there's some people who say, ah, that's fine as long as you keep her down. But other people, they're like, it is disrespectful to be doing the deed while you got guests in the house. What are you, where are you at, Charlie? Well, Miles, I've stayed at your house before. Yes. And? I would like to plead the fifth and talk about other people. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. What do you think? Do you think it's fine? I mean, I I I think your house, your rules. So, I mean, I think his folks were well within their deal. And also, this is a big uh, bonfire party situation. I think once you've had a couple, two, three at the bonfire, it all goes out the window anyway. You can you can go in with rules, but them rules are going to get broken after a couple shotguns and, you know, some randy thoughts. I think the more important issue here is that your buddy seems to be pretty chillax about his parents getting it on really loud. Well, he grew up with it. <laughs> I suppose. You know? It's how he got here. He's like, I'm I'm just thankful I'm here. Yeah. How many kids are in that family? It's his brother. And then he has like a, uh, what do you call it? Like a half sister or whatever. But uh, yeah, she's a crackhead. So okay. they're, not, they're not really affiliated anymore. <sighs> huh. Well, well, oh shit! Yeah, I had to go down that road, huh? But then, but here was another issue. What's that? After I went and laid down, after hearing that, my buddy's room is right above the couch. No, and I heard him doing it with the girl, and I was just <laughs> like, I can't escape it. I think we <laughs> found the root of the, the problem family. here, Charlie. <laughs> I got, I got, 
I, I got uppercutted and then I got hit with a combo. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. I think that there's a deeper issue here that's yeah. maybe causing you some trauma. You're just jealous. You're Everyone not else it. is getting laid, but you, you know? Yeah. And I think that that's really what this is about. I think so. Do you have a significant other in your life? I actually do. I'm in uh, Manhattan, Kansas right now visiting her. Oh, well, good for you. Are you where are you? Is, like, she just lives there? Is, is she live with her parents? What's uh, she's that? She's going to school at K-State. Okay. She, she's a student at K-State. Well, um, what does she, she think about the situation? Then. Does she think that it's fine? Is she on your side? Where is she at? You know, I don't think I ever told her. Okay. I, I appreciate that, that you know. That we're talking about it. You, that you've confided this in us, you know, that you've, you've, you've trusted us with this important info. Did you, well, talk to me about the next day. So you got, oh shits and oh yeahs going all around you while you're trying to sleep on that couch. Sun comes up the next yeah, morning. Of, what was, I heard a little bit of slapping of the ass too. Oh my God. Good Lord. Yeah. Now, when you were sleeping on that couch, did the thought go through your mind that that couch probably had yeah. been used <laughs> yeah. for more than just sitting? Yeah. You know, that all I let you say that. Yeah. yeah. Did they, <laughs> you're like, oh, you're like, oh, <laughs> shit. That's not an ice cream stain on the couch. Like they told me. Slept outside yeah. The couch. You know, I think uh, you should you should be thankful, honestly. And I tell you a quick story. My uncle uh, had his buddy staying over at my grandparents' house, and he got up to uh, take a tinkle in the middle of the night, and he went. He he got lost in the house, went in the wrong room, went into my grandparents' room, crawled into bed with them, <laughs> and ever since then they called him Wrong Way Tommy. <laughs> you know, yeah. he didn't even stick around for breakfast the next a, morning. I would not. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I had a uh, a friend at a party at my house. Like at two in the morning, I'm passed out. I hear a big thud, like somebody comes falling down the stairs, and I hear my dad yelling and screaming. So I go upstairs. I'm like, "What's going on?" I thought somebody broke into the house. And he goes, you pissed on my wall. And I'm like, who? He goes, your friend. I was like, oh. Yeah. Well, come to find out, he uh, was drunk and slept walking, uh, peed on my dad's wall, and then I had to clean it up. <laughs> what was the thud? Was the thud your dad knocking him down the stairs? No, that was my friend falling down the stairs, running away from my dad. Okay. <laughs> but then the best part is we never, he woke up and we're all sitting around for front row seats. And he's like, hey, guys, we never told him what he did. So my dad walks down and he's like, Hey, Pat, and my dad just cussed him out up and down, but he never knew what he did until after we told him. But we let him get the earful first. <laughs> you guys are good friends. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Well, do you think this helped? Uh, it, does that do those sounds still live rent free inside your soul? I think sometimes the real question is, do I ever bring it up that I heard them doing it to them? No, no that is I just insane. That to no. Just send them this episode. Well, the problem is, is I might hear it again. Well, just and stop so sleeping at their house. Go yeah. home or get a tent. Bring a tent. They're at. They got a, a bunch camper. of land. Bring a tent. Though. I'm gonna make one of the other friends sleep on the couch. Yeah, you 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 did. If you don't have a bed, you're doing this to yourself. It's 2023, dude. You can get some noise canceling headphones. That's it's not true. that hard. Yeah, those are expensive oh, though. Should, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, get some like earplugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are cheap, actually. Those are. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean. Yeah, just sleep outside. You just get a tent, dude. I don't. Then he, then you find out it's worse out there. He wakes. <laughs> he wakes up. Over. No, he wakes up. There's two bears doing it next to him. <laughs> I can't get away from this. Do bears do it the at cows night? Are doing it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> cows are doing it. Wow. Well, uh, uh, huh. A lot of a lot of. I think I would just dump one over and have it. <laughs> I would just walk home. <laughs> there you go. That's the answer, dude. Yeah. I think that'd be my therapy. When the fire, like when the fire burns down, you walk home. Mm-hmm. 
Lesson learned. Yeah. Lesson learned. Kids got to come so. from somewhere. I think I just got to stop going over there completely. Just cut ties. No, don't cut ties. Don't no, cut they're, t- actually, they're actually lovely people. They're actually lovely people. They really are. I they're very the, generous. They, get, they, know, they generous. are loving people. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. They love a lot. <laughs> yeah. There's no shame in that game. No shame in that game. So, uh, you guys are right, though. I was in their house. Yeah. It's not like they were in your house. If they were in your house, it'd be a different story, you know? Um, and at least they were in their bedroom, not where it could be, could be seen. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I mean, they, so. the reasonable expectation of privacy. You know, if you really want to be a nice guy, uh, you really want to solve this problem. I think you uh, offer to add an extra layer of drywall to the uh to their bedroom i do a little couple and put some uh you know you put that uh i think you know, it's no hey soundproof it sleepwalk piss on his wall and then you're like oh well we gotta <laughs> replace the sheetrock and when you rip that sheetrock off put a lot of insulation double yep. sheetrock it give there some space between the the sheetrock for that that coupling action you know yeah, look up uh, soundproofing. It's an expensive thing, but it sounds I, like... I think, I think the bigger thing would be is if I pissed on their wall, I just don't think I'd be invited back over. That's yeah, perfect. That, 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 would, that would be a solution. That, that would solve it right there. there so we, we've got some options I for you. I enjoy going over there, so. Well, we appreciate you calling well, in. You got anything you want to buy, sell, or trade? Charlie. <laughs> no. <laughs> just curious. Just curious. Uh, I don't. I don't think I do. All right. Well, it was nice chit chat with you. you guys, uh, is there anything anybody's been selling? Um. Uh, where's where, someone to look? Do you have a Yamaha TR two thirty blue two thousand six TT two thirty? Yeah. Did you steal one of those? All right. All right. Well, we're on the we're on the lookout for one of those. So if you if you see one, let us oh, know. Yeah. Please do. I will. Real good. Uh, well, it was a pleasure talking to you guys. Yeah, thanks you for calling well. in and all day, uh, all day mowing. So watch out for those clapping cheeks out there. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think if I just put my ear some earbuds in, I think uh, yeah, most of that problem solved. Problem solved. Technology. It's a great thing. All right, Tyson. Well, you have a good one. Tell your friends, folks. We says hi. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye bye now. Wouldn't that be funny if they were like actually were like they weren't doing the deed? They were like playing like a board game or something. And she's like, oh, oh shit. Ah, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. And then she was winning like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. What are they playing? Yahtzee, you know? Yahtzee. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's great. Yeah. Well, Charlie, I think that's another good episode in the books. Thanks so, Miles. It's been a pleasure uh, going on this ride with you. Yes, guys, as always, don't forget to tip your bartender. We mm-hmm. love you. We and do. We'll, and we'll see you in the next one. Real good.